Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about my surgery rotation, which is the last rotation that I have of my clinical year. And so I'm completely done with clinicals now. Same thing as before with all my other videos on my rotation overviews, I'm just going to go over what I liked, what I didn't like, what I learned, the layout of it, how I adapted to the environment and things like that, and kind of give you some tips and tricks if you're going to be starting your surgery rotation. I hope this is not a super long video, but in the case that it is, grab a drink, snack, something, and we'll just go ahead and get into this video. The first couple things I'm going to talk about are the setting of my rotation, what it was like. My surgery rotation was inpatient. I was at a hospital and we only saw inpatient people. I was only ever in the OR or on the floors and I know that a lot of the surgical residents also had to go out and do outpatient clinic but students weren't part of that so I just stayed in the hospital the entire time. The hours for my rotation were really rough. I want to say that out of all my rotations, this is the one where I spent the most amount of hours actually in the hospital. So I would have to get to the hospital at 5.30, which would mean that I needed to leave my house at 4.30 because it was an hour drive for me one way. And in the morning, I would wake up at 4 to make sure that I had time to like get my food, breakfast ready, lunch, um, and also like use the bathroom, comb my hair, things like that. So I would wake up at four, leave the house at 4.30, and then get to the hospital at 5.15 or so. And then I would quickly force myself to eat my breakfast. And the reason being because my first day i made the mistake of not eating breakfast i was stuck in the or until maybe 1 or 2 p.m when i left the or i was very shaky and i couldn't tell if it was because i was hypoglycemic or whatever but i didn't eat and that's the moral of the story it's that you never know when you're going to be in the or until and so i would just say eat when you can even if you're not hungry just have a little something so that you're sustained for the time being in the operating room so i would get there early in the morning eat a little bit in my car before i would head in and then i would pre-round with the residents get back to the room by seven round with the attendings and then after rounding, we would go to the OR. Um, sometimes I would stay on the floor if there were no scheduled cases, but essentially that is the layout of my day and what I did. For the procedures on this rotation, you're going to be doing a lot. So it depends how comfortable you are with things. This was my last rotation, and so I was more comfortable doing more things than not. I was able to suture in the OR and the one thing that they'll teach you how to do is close um laparoscopic port sites so this is those like one to two centimeter incisions that they need to insert the like scopes and things like that i was able to bovi and this was a very very cool and i think special experience for me because i was never able to do this before and a lot of my friends even though i was talking to them about my surgery rotation they told me that they were not lucky enough to be able to bovi either and so i was really really lucky that this happened and i think it's because just during that surgery the attending had to step aside for a second and so the resident assumed the role of the attending continued the surgery and i was his first assist so i was bovying i was handing off tools especially like when we're tying off vessels um, i was doing all of that and it was very much so a very special experience for me and i think that because i was able to do so many things in the or i felt more comfortable and i also just thought that this rotation was so hands-on and i learned so much because i was able to do so much aside from those there's a lot of dressing changes so things that you're going to want to keep in handy when you're rounding with your residents and your attendings are some four by fours so if you don't know what that is just some sterile gauze and then also you want to have tape handy this is important because you're going to be changing a lot of dressing so four by fours tape hegaderm you might need some abd pads and then 
those are the, the basic things that you would need for dressing changes. Having some scissors or a pair of shears is also helpful in case you need to cut things off. Other procedures in the OR, you'll be able to put in foleys if you ask. A lot of the times you're helping set up for the case and things like that. My autonomy on this rotation was a little strange so it's different from the autonomy you're thinking of you're not really like off doing your own things but in a sense you are doing a lot because before you head into a case you want to make sure that you understand the patient's hpi and then also how the procedure kind of goes right you can google the steps of a procedure kind of know and familiarize yourself with the most important steps the landmarks that they look for what are the most important vessels muscles nerves that you don't want to hit things like that like you want to understand the procedure as a whole and then have a bigger picture of what's the purpose what's the outcome what are the consequences of doing these surgeries and then definitely like helping out in the OR in terms of setting up the patient, putting the SED boots on, the bear hugger. If they need arm boards, make sure that you're tucking in their arms correctly, using blankets to cover them. Those are the biggest things that a student can help with. And then also, if you're gonna be scrubbing into a case, definitely give your scrub nurse the gown and gloves. I usually like to double glove because the first glove, if it gets bloody and you know dirty, I'll just take that off when I'm doing my sutures to close. And then at that point, my gloves are clean or when I'm putting on the steri strips at the end, I want it to be clean. So I'll take off the bloody gloves then. Those are really the biggest things that you want to do when you're in the OR. In terms of scrubbing, this is a process that should not take longer than five minutes or so. Um, usually what I do when I scrub is I will wash my hands with regular soap and water and then I'll grab this. So I usually grab the chlorhexidine one. The hospital that I was at had a policy where for the first scrub of the day, you must use this soap and it comes with like the blue pick where you go under your nails and kind of like scrape out all the dirt and then the little brussels on the sides and then the sponge side goes on your skin. Like I was saying, for the first scrub of the day, you would have to use the soap and then your other cases that you were scrubbing into, you could use the Avogard kind of like gel sanitizer thing. So that's what I would do. I would put on eyewear. So that would probably be like a pair of goggles. Um, head into the OR where the scrub nurse will help me get into my gown, then I would glove, and then you close off your gown. That's essentially it. And then you stand by the table so that you're sterile and don't touch anything else. You can put your hands on the patient because the patient is sterile at that point if they've been draped. And that's basically it. So the hardest part of this rotation was honestly trying to get enough sleep and make sure that I was eating well, sleeping well, and just learning as much as I could on this rotation because I knew how much time I would be spending in the OR or maybe just like even at the hospital. There's really no time to study because I was doing, oh, I never talked about this, but my times would be from 5.30 to 6. So I was there for 12 and a half hours a day, five days a week. And so I rarely had time to study in the hospital. My weeks at the hospital were two weeks on green, which is general surgery two weeks on blue, which is vascular surgery, and then two weeks on red, which was trauma slash acute care surgery. I spent the most of the time in the ER on green and blue, and then for trauma, it was just waiting for a trauma to come in. And also if they had some scheduled like appendectomies or lap coles. So yeah, back to the hardest part of the rotation, it was definitely trying to juggle going to the hospital, spending so much time there and then coming home and studying after my shifts i would try to review just a little bit because i didn't want to leave everything off until the weekends and study all like crammed into two days especially because those are the days that i was trying to rest as much as possible since i was going 150 percent monday through friday things that i would brush up on for this rotation definitely know your tools, right? When you're doing an IND, you want to know what this is. This is a hemostat and it's the thing that helps to break up the loculations on an abscess. So this is important. You definitely want to get a suturing pad to practice your sutures, whether that be running subcutaneous or buried interrupted. Those were the two main sutures that I used in the OR because those are the ones that you don't see after you suture. You want to know what these tools are. You want to be familiar with, with what 
four by fours are and also a straps like these are super important too because this is what you'll be wrapping patients with i think it's important to brush up on or etiquette and understanding the people in the or and the roles that they have so there's i'm going to give you a brief overview so in the or you have yourself usually the surgeon who is the attending their first assist which is either a resident or a pa and then you have the scrub nurse who is the person that is sterile she or he is the person that hands off tools over to the surgeons first assist students things like that and then they take it back when the tools are no longer needed then you have the circulating nurse who is what it sounds like she's circulating around the room she or he is not sterile and they're able to get tools and things that are needed for this the sterile table and they'll open it up sterilely hand it off to the scrub nurse so they're there to make sure that the start time is noted down anything that dropped on the floor is noted they are counting the items that are opened and also helping the scrub nurse count later on to make sure that there are no laps or tools missing or inside the patient for that case and then also you have another really important person at the head of the patient which is the anesthesiologist he or she is the person that is going to put the patient under so whether that be using propofol or an, an other anesthetics they're in charge of the airway and making sure that the patient is breathing properly the vitals are normal throughout the entire surgery and they are not sterile and you'll know that because they are behind the drapes that um, are at the head of the patient so those are essentially the most important people in the room sometimes there's more students sometimes there's more nurses and um, it really just depends on the case. Familiarize yourself with the different people in the room. And when you head in to the, the room, you want to introduce yourself to everyone. Let them know that you're a student and that you're going to be scrubbing in. I would usually just ask the scrub nurse, like, do you want me to get my gloves or do you want me to open them for you? Things like that. And I think showing that little bit of friendliness will make them more likely to want to help you and to you know like help you gown and things like that it's also important to introduce yourself to the surgeon and i tell you this because imagine if you were the surgeon going into a surgery you're already nervous about the case right like surgery is a very nerve-wracking thing and it's nerve-wracking for the patient because it's scary but it's also nerve-wracking for the surgeon because things can go wrong anatomy can look different from normal anatomy and so they really have to be prepared at any time and place imagine if you were the surgeon and you go to scrub into your case and there's someone standing next to you at the table that you literally have no idea who they are you've never met them before you don't know their name you don't know their role i'm saying this because i think it's important to introduce yourself to the surgeon and also to the resident or whoever else is at the table so they know who you are most of the time the attending will let you scrub in there's really no point in not letting the students scrub in especially if they're there for their surgery rotation i will say there are certain cases where it's more worth it to scrub in let's say it's a vascular case that is very important that you scrub in the access or the field is so small that if you're standing away from the table not scrubbed you will absolutely see nothing if you're in a robotic case it's not as important to scrub in in the beginning because all they're doing is just putting in the ports and then at that time after the ports are in you can visualize the surgery on the screen so that and laparoscopic are less important to scrub in but nonetheless if you are asked to you scrub in and you always help close other surgeries there's a lot of surgeries that utilize fluoroscopy and x-rays and so it's important to wear your lead during those surgeries especially to cover your neck um, because of thyroid issues that can come from radiation. So you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper gear. One of the biggest things I learned on this rotation is to not be afraid to ask questions. There were always so many terms being thrown around in surgery that I had literally no idea what they were saying, but I would ask, I would inquire about why we were doing this study. They would always ask me the question back and, and try to get me to think about the answer before I would get the answer from them but it really showed me that the reason why i wasn't understanding was because i was having a little bit of gap in knowledge and after they explained to me that gap in knowledge it made so much more sense and one of the biggest things in surgery that is important is electrolyte imbalances and it's because a lot of the times you're dealing with patients that have ng tubes nausea vomiting 
diarrhea. And when you're in surgery, you also lose a lot of fluids and blood. And so your electrolytes and your H&H &H can vary a little bit. And so it's important to kind of use those labs and to help you paint a clinical picture with how the patient's looking so that you can treat them adequately. And then also using my hands to, to do procedures. That was one of the biggest things on this rotation, which I really liked. And I didn't think that I was going to like being in the OR so much, but I think it's quite interesting the environment of an OR and how sterile it is and just like how much attention they pay to little things. I have so much respect for surgeons because they know such a vast amount of information about anatomy that I'm literally blown away because I thought that I had a pretty solid foundation on anatomy, but hearing them talk about different parts when their patients open and they're talking about arteries, veins, nerves that we're looking at and the fascia and things like that. It's like, it's crazy because I didn't think the body was so complex in so many ways. When you do your surgery rotation, you will definitely see that. You'll see how much the human body is so complex and how many layers there are and how many things are like meshed together but surgeons know how to dissect that and that's something they learn over their five years of residency i can tell you a story that i learned on my last day there we were rounding and the attending was asking us meaning all the students and the residents this question and up until me all of the residents and students had said the other answer that we were given. So the other choice that we were given between the two. So it was either A or B. And everyone had chosen A up until that point. And then the attending looked at me and asked me what I thought. And I said that I think it's B. In my head, I originally wanted to say A because I didn't want to be different from everyone else, right? I just thought my gut is telling me B, but everyone is saying A. So what if A is right and I don't want to look stupid? I went with my gut. I said it was B. And then the senior resident answered the question. And they also said they thought it was B. And the attending looked at me and said, you're right, it is B. And so my biggest point here or my biggest advice is go with your gut. You know more than you think. And if something doesn't seem right to you or, or something just seems off, let someone know because most of the time you're probably right. And if you're wrong, it's okay. And that's only gonna help you clinically when you're actually working and you see the same things over and over again. For this rotation, I would give it a five out of five. I learned a lot, I was able to do a lot. As for what you wear in the hospital, you're going to be wearing scrubs that the hospital gives you and you're only allowed to enter the OR with that on. And then for shoes, I wore these clogs from Crocs and they were super comfortable. And another thing I can recommend is to definitely wear compression socks. You're gonna be on your feet for the majority of the day and compression socks is gonna help you keep that flow going back up remember to eat and drink before you go into the or as well as use the bathroom before you go into the or because you never know how long these cases can be the longest case i've ever gone into was seven hours and i was honestly crying internally because my knees were broken but um it was a really cool case and in that case i was able to close all four of the laparoscopic robotic ports which was very very cool first and foremost always take care of yourself if you don't feel well in the or let someone know let the circulating nurse know if you need a stool ask for one if you need a, a step stool ask for one if you need some apple juice ask someone because you're at the table you're scrubbed in you can't actually leave the room but they can bring things to you all right so that is going to be the end of this video i think i covered a a good amount of things um i'm literally surrounded by like surgical tools right now and this is all stuff that my school had given me in the beginning of um didactic year because we we just needed these materials but um i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i really hope that you find these rotation overview videos helpful i i just really want to give so much advice to people who are in the class lower than me and so on and so forth because rotations can be scary and i've always wanted that person that could give me advice and to kind of walk me through things um, and so hopefully i was that person for you if you guys have any other questions about your surgery rotation 
definitely leave them down below. I would gladly, gladly answer them. I hope that the next video I make for you guys is gonna be my how to study for EORs because I finished taking all of my EORs today and I passed all of them and I'm so glad that I don't have to take another one. But now I think it's safe for me to kind of give you an overview on how I study for my EORs. I fell into that kind of rhythm and I definitely have some words and advice for that. So hopefully that will be my next video. Stay tuned for that one and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!